Hi guys, it's me Jess here and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how I make my spring cottage core dress. Before we start, I want to share with you some basic information for your reference. The first thing is about the pattern of this dress. The most complicated part of this dress is about the top part. So I use my glitter dress pattern to make my pattern making easier. That's why if you already have my pattern, you can use it to make your pattern making for the top part of this dress. But if you don't, no worry, I put the link of the pattern making in the description so you can check it out. The second thing is that I make this dress with a lining because I use a boy fabric. It's a line and a big see-through fabric in a beautiful floral printing. So I need to add a lining for it. That's why it makes the sewing process a little bit longer than usual. But the result is just so worth it because the inside face of the dress looks really clean. So I hope you guys will like it and check it out and let's get started. The first step is making the pattern for the dress. To make the sleeve pattern, I use the sleeve pattern from my glider dress. I fold the sleeve pattern in half foot. After that, I cut off the seam allowance at the end of the sleeve. From the new ending line, I draw another line at 4cm above it. It's the length of the bow tie area at the end of the sleeve that I want. I also redraw the underarm big line a bit after that. To create the area for the bow tie at the middle at the end of the sleeve, I mark at 5cm above the end of the folding line. It's the length of the open area for the bow tie that I want. I also mark at 1cm on the ending line from the end of the folding line. It's the half of the width of the open area for the bow tie that I want, minus 1cm for seam allowance. Then connect two marks together. And we will have the main pattern of the sleeve after cutting. Moving to the front bodice pattern, I fold the dark area of the front bodice of the glider dress foot. Then I copy that pattern with the fold dart later. From the side line of the pattern, I draw a line at 24cm parallel with it. It's a quarter of my bust side blood 2cm for the button area, blood 2cm for seam allowance. From the top of the shoulder line, I mark down at 35cm, which is the length from the shoulder to under my breast, blood 2cm for seam allowance. Then drawing a straight line to that mark. From the cutting point between this straight line and the horizontal line that I drew before, I mark up 5cm on the horizontal line. It's the length of the curved line at the breast area that I want. Then drawing a curved line from that mark to meet the straight line. From this mark, I keep making another mark at 5cm above it. It's the end of the neck of the thread that I want. Then connect it to the top of the shoulder line to create a new neckline for the front bodice. And we will have the front bodice pattern after cutting. This pattern will be used for the lining fabric. To make the front bodice pattern for the main fabric, I make one mark at the middle of the shoulder line fit. Then drawing a straight line from that mark to the end of the pattern. After that, I keep making two more marks at two sides of the first one on the shoulder line. Then creating two more lines from them to the end of the first one. When cutting, keep the lines a bit at the end, so the whole pattern won't fall apart. After that, I open the shoulder area to make them bigger than the current one. I use the tape to stick their position, then drawing to get the new front bodice pattern. And we have the front bodice pattern for the main fabric after cutting. To make the back bodice pattern, I use the back bodice pattern from the glider dress. I cut off the extra at the dark part foot to make the ending line nicer. After that, I draw a new line at 6cm above the ending line. 6cm is the length of the waistband at the front bodice I have left before. And we'll have the main back bodice pattern after cutting. 
Moving to the waistband pattern, I started with the back of the waistband foot. I fold the left over of the back pattern that I cut up before in half. Then I copy that pattern to the new paper. From the top of the pattern, I draw a line 2 cm above that line for seam allowance. From the side line, I mark at 18 cm inside it. It's a quarter of my under bust side plus 1 cm for seam allowance. Then drawing a straight line to that mark. And we will have the back part of the waistband after cutting. Remember to cut it in full fabric at a straight line. Moving to the front of the waistband, I use the left over of the front bodice that I cut up before. From the side line, I mark a 22 cm inside it. It's a quarter of my under bust side blood 2 cm for the button area, blood 2 cm for seam allowance. Then drawing a straight line to that mark. After cutting, I copy this part into the paper. Then drawing a line at 2 cm above the top line of the pattern for seam allowance. And we will have the front pattern of the waistband after cutting. The skirt pattern for the dress requires symbol. Here's the skirt pattern for the main fabric, and here's the skirt pattern for the lining fabric. Now, let's start sewing this beautiful dress. I use 25 meter of boy fabric for the main fabric of the dress, and 25 meter of soft and thin cotton fabric for the lining. I started sewing the sleeve first. I connect the main fabric and the lining fabric of the sleeve together at the middle part at the end of the sleeve foot. After sewing, I make a few small cuts to help the curve line look nicer when turning it out. Then I connect the under ambic line of the main fabric and the lining fabric together separately. Make sure the right face of the fabric facing each other in sewing. After that, I turn the sleeve inside out to the right face. Then connect the ending line of the sleeve of the main fabric and the lining fabric together. I do the same for the top line of the sleeve to keep them stay and not moving. At the end of the sleeve, I make a loose seam first, then I create the gathering fabric there later. The final width of the gathering fabric will be 22cm, which is the width of my arm. I cut a long rectangle fabric with 10cm length, which is two times the length of the bow tie area that I kept when making the pattern before, blood 2cm for seam allowance and 66 cm width which is 3 times the width of my arm. I connect the middle of one width line of the rectangle to the end of the sleeve and sew to connect them together. Remember to connect the inside face of the rectangle to the right side face of the sleeve. After sewing, Fold the rest of the rectangle together. There will be the bow tie area. 
so I make them a big curve at the top when sewing. Remember to keep the right face of the fabric together. Cutting the leftover fabric a bit before turning them inside out. At the rest of the rectangle, I fold the end fabric inside around 1cm foot, then keep folding it over the first seam and make the second seam. At the top of the sleeve, I make the loose seam first, then I create a gathering fabric there later. Make sure the final width of the sleeve will be the same with the sleeve line at the baddest part so you can connect them together later. Moving to the baddest, at the front baddest of the main fabric, I make the loose seam at the shoulder line first. Then I create the gathering fabric there later. The final width of the gathering fabric will be the same with the width of the shoulder line at the back bodice, so you can connect them together later. I also connect the side line of the front and the back bodice together, and doing the same for the lining part of the main bodice. Now I'm connecting the sleeve to the main bodice foot. After sewing, I keep connecting the lining part of the main bodice to the sleeve. Make sure the sleeve will be in the middle between two baddest part and make the second seam over the first seam. After sewing, I make a few small cuts at the curve line of the sleeve before turning them. Then I connect two bodice parts together at the necklines. Make sure the right face of the fabric will be facing each other.
after turning them to high on the seam inside, I sewed two ending lines of the main fabric and the lining fabric together. After that, I make the loose seam at the ending line of the top part first, then I create the gathering fabric there later. Make sure the gathering fabric will be at the middle of the bust area and the middle of the back. And the final width at the end of the top part will be the under bust side plus 4 cm for the button area. Moving to the waistband, I connect two pieces of the front waistband to the back waistband at two side foot. I do the same for the lining fabric of the waistband at well. After that, I connect the top line of the waistband to the end of the top part first. Then I connect them to the lining fabric of the waistband later. Make sure the top part of the dress will be in the middle between two waistband, and make the second seam over the first one. At the skirt part, is the back of the skirt at the main fabric. From the top of the skirt, I mark down at 8cm on two side lines. It's the position for the pocket, then add in the pocket there later, and sewing. I also do the same at the front of the skirt, then connect two pieces of the front to the back of the skirt at two side lines. To create a dip for the pocket, I mark a 13.5 cm from the top of the pocket. This will be the open area of the pocket where you can put your hand in, then sew the rest together. At the end of the skirt, I fold it inside two times with 1 cm each time and sew to finish it. At the top of the skirt, I make the loose seam first, then I create a gathering fabric there later. The final width of the gathering fabric will be the same as the width at the end of the top part, so you can connect them together later. Make sure to keep 4cm not gathering at two ends of the front skirt for the button area. At the lining part of the skirt, 
I finish the end of the skirt by folding the end fabric inside to thumb with a half centimeter each thumb and sewing. Now I'm connecting the top and the bottom of the dress together. I connect them separately between the main fabric and the lining fabric. After sewing, I connect the middle line of the front skirt and the main fabric and the lining fabric together. If you want to waistband of the dress stay together and hide on the end fabric inside, you can make an understitching seam at the end of the front waistband. But if you don't like it, just keep them free. And the last step is adding the button and creating the buttonhole. And we finished this DIY. Here's my final result. This is one of the cottage corrects that I only wanted to have in my wardrobe. And finally, I make it. It turned out just so perfect. I hope you like it and check it out. See you next week.